Namaste, Dhanava Pranam. By the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj, we are here reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 3, The Status Quo. Chapter 9, Brahma's Prayers for Creative Energy. Text 1. Brahma Uvacha Kyatosi Medya Suchirana Nu Deha Bajam Nagyalyate Bhagavato Gatir Itya Vadyam Nanyatvar Asti Bhagavan Api Tanasudam Mayaguna Vyati Karadyad Urur Vibasi Lord Brahma said, O oh my Lord, today after many, many years of penance, I have come to know about you. Oh, how unfortunate the embodied living entities are that they are unable to know your personality. My Lord, you are the only knowable object because there is nothing supreme beyond you. If there is anything supposedly superior to you, it is not the absolute. You exist as the supreme by exhibiting the creative energy of matter. Purport. The highest peak of ignorance of the living entities who are conditioned by material bodies is that they are unaware of the supreme cause of the cosmic manifestation. Different people have different theories regarding the supreme cause, but none of them are genuine. The only supreme cause is Vishnu, and the intervening impediment is the illusory energy of the Lord. The Lord has employed his wonderful material energy in manifesting many, many wonderful distractions in the material world, and the conditioned souls illusioned by the same energy are thus unable to know the supreme cause. The most stalwart scientists and philosophers, therefore, cannot be accepted as wonderful. They only appear wonderful because they, uh, they are instruments in the hands of the illusory energy of the Lord. Under illusion, the general mass of people deny the existence of the Supreme Lord and accept the foolish products of illusory energy as supreme. One can know the supreme cause, the personality of Godhead, by causeless mercy of the Lord, which is bestowed upon the Lord's pure devotees like Brahma and those in his disciplic succession. By acts of penance only was Lord Brahma able to see Garbhodakshai Vishnu, and by realization, only could he understand the Lord as he is. Brahma was extremely satisfied upon observing the magnificent beauty and opulence of the Lord, and he admitted that nothing can be comparable to him. Only by penance can one appreciate the beauty and opulence of the Supreme Lord, and when one is acquainted with that beauty and opulence, he is no longer attracted by any other. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 2.59, Param Drisva Nivartate. Foolish human beings who do not endeavor to investigate the supreme beauty and opulence of the Lord are here condemned by Brahma. It is imperative that every human being try such uh, try for such knowledge, and if anyone does not do so, his life is spoiled. Anything that is beautiful and opulent in the material sense is enjoyed by those living entities who are like crows. Crows always engage in picking at rejected garbage whereas the white ducks do not, miss with, do not mix with the crows. Rather, they take pleasure in transparent lakes with the lotus flowers surrounded by beautiful orchids and orchards. Both crows and ducks are undoubtedly birds by both, but they are not of the same feather. Text two. Rupam yade tad ava bodharaso dayena Sashvanivritta tamasa sad anugrahaya Adogrihitam avatara sataika bijam Yanabi padma bhavanad aham avirsham. The form which I see is eternally freed from material contamination and has advanced uh, and has advented has advented to show mercy to the devotees as a manifestation of internal potency. This incarnation is the origin of many other incarnations and I am born from the lotus flower grown from your navel home. Purport. 
The three deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshvara, or Shiva, the executive heads of the three modes of material nature, passion, goodness, and ignorance, are all generated from Garbhodaksha Vishnu, who is herein described uh, by Brahma. From the Chirodaksha Vishnu, many Vishnu incarnations expand at different ages in the duration of cosmic manifestation. They are expanded only for the transcendental happiness of the pure devotees. The incarnations of Vishnu who appear at different ages and times are never to be compared to the conditioned souls. The Vishnu tattvas are not to be compared to deities like Brahma and Shiva, nor are they on the same level. Anyone who compares them is called a Pashandi or infidel. Tamasa mentioned herein is the material nature and the spiritual nature has a completely separate existence from Tama. Therefore, spiritual nature is called uh, Avabodha Rasa or Avarodha Rasa. Avarodha means that which completely nullifies. In the transcendence, there is no chance of material contact by any means. Brahma is the first living being and therefore, he mentions his birth from the lotus flower generated from the abdomen of Garbhodachai Vishnu. Text three. Nata param parama yad bhavata svarupam anandamatram avikalpam avidha varcha asyami vishva shrijam ekam avishvam atman O my Lord, I do not see a form superior to your present form of eternal bliss and knowledge. In your impersonal Brahman effulgence in the spiritual sky, there is no occasional change, no deterioration of internal potency. I surrender unto you because whereas I am proud of my material body and senses, your Lordship is the cause of the cosmic manifestation and yet you are untouched by matter. Purport. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 18.55, Bhakti Mama Bijananti Yavanyas Jasmi Tattvata, the Supreme Personality of Godhead can only be partially known and only by the process of devotional service to the Lord. Lord Brahma became aware that the Supreme Lord Krishna has many, many eternal blissful forms of knowledge. He has described such expansions of the Supreme Lord Govinda in his Brahma Samhita 5.33 as follows. Advaitim machutim anadam anantarupam adyam puranam purusham naviyovanamsha vedeshu dorlabam adorlabam atma bhakto govindam adi purusham tamaham bhajami. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord who is non dual and infallible. He is the original cause of all causes, even though he expands in many, many forms. Although he is the oldest personality, he is ever youthful, unaffected by old age. The Supreme Personality of Godhead cannot be known by the academic wisdom of the Vedas. One has to approach the devotee of the Lord to understand him. The only way to understand the Lord as he is, is by devotional service to the Lord or by approaching the devotee of the Lord who always has the Lord in his heart. By devotional perfection, one can understand that the impersonal Brahma Jyoti is only a partial representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Krishna and the other three Purusha expansions in the material creation are his plenary portions. In the spiritual sky of the Brahma Jyoti, there is no change of various kalpas or millenniums, and there are no creative activities in the Vaikuntha worlds. The influence of time is conspicuous by its absence. The rays of the transcendental body of the Lord are the unlimited Brahma Jyoti and are undeterred by the influence of material energy. In the material world also, the initial creator is the Lord himself. He brings about the creation of Brahma, who becomes the subsequent creator empowered by the Lord. Next four. Adva idam bhuvana mangala mangalaya jyanesmano darshitam ta upashkanam tasmai namo bhagavate nuvidhema tubyam yonadrito naraka bhagbir asat prashangai. This present form or any transcendental form expanded by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna 
is equally auspicious for all the universes. Since you have manifested this eternal personal form upon whom your devotees meditate, I therefore offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Those who are destined to be dispatched to the path of hell neglect your personal form because of speculating on material topics. Purport. Regarding the personal and impersonal features of the Supreme Absolute Truth, the personal forms exhibited by the Lord and his different plenary expansions are all for the benediction of the, all the universes. The personal form of the Lord is also worshipped in meditation as super soul, paramatma, but the impersonal Brahmajyoti is not worshipped. Persons who are addicted to the impersonal feature of the Lord, whether in meditation or otherwise, are all pilgrims to hell, because as stated in Bhagavad Gita 12.5, impersonalists simply waste their time in mundane mental speculation because they are addicted more to false arguments than to reality. Therefore, the association of the impersonalist is condemned herewith by Brahma. All the plenary expansions of the personality of Godhead are equally potent, as confirmed in Brahma Samhita 5.46. The Lord expands himself as the flames of a fire expand one after another. Although the original flame, or Sri Krishna, is accepted as Govinda, the Supreme Person, all other expansions, such as Rama, Nirshingha, and Varaha, are as potent as the original Lord. All such expanded forms are transcendental. In the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is made clear that the Supreme Truth is eternally uncontaminated by material touch. There is no jugglery of words and activities in the transcendental kingdom of the Lord. All the Lord's forms are transcendental, and such manifestations are ever identical. Uh, are ever identical. The particular form of the Lord exhibited to a devotee is not mundane, even though the devotee may retain material desire, nor is it manifest under the influence of material energy, as is foolishly considered by the impersonalists. Impersonalists who consider the transcendental forms of the Lord to be products of the material world are surely destined for hell. Text 5. Etu tvadiya charnam buja kosha gandam, jagranti karna vivarai, shruti vata nitam, bakya grihita charana paraya chartisham, apaisi natta hridayam burat svapum sam. O my Lord, persons who smell the aroma of your lotus feet, carried by the air of Vedic sound through the holes of the ears, Accept your devotional service. For them, you are never separated from the lotus of their hearts. Purport. For the pure devotee of the Lord, there is nothing beyond the lotus feet of the Lord. And the Lord knows that such devotees do not wish anything more than that. The word too specifically establishes this fact. The Lord also does not wish to be separated from the lotus hearts of those pure devotees. That is the transcendental relationship between the pure devotees and the personality of Godhead. Because the Lord does not wish to separate himself from the hearts of such pure devotees, it is understood that they are specifically dearer than the impersonalists. The relationship of the pure devotees with the Lord develops because of transcendental devotional service to the Lord on the authentic basis of Vedic authority. Such pure devotees are not mundane sentimentalists, but are factually realists because their activities are supported by the Vedic authorities who have given oral reception to the facts mentioned in the Vedic literatures. The word paraya is significant. Parabhakti or spontaneous love of God is the basis of an intimate relationship with the Lord. The highest stage of the relationship with the Lord can be attained simply by hearing about him, his name, fame, his name, his form, his quality, etc from authentic sources like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, recited by pure, unalloyed devotees of the Lord. And thus ends our reading for today. We'll continue from text six on uh, Friday.
Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai. Prabhupada Srila Guru Maharaj Srila Guru De Srila Acharya De Srila Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai. Jai Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. O glorious the assembled Jai. devotees, O glorious to the worldwide devotees, Sama Bhakti Veda Vrinda Ki Jai. Jai. Jai Navadvip Dham Ki Jai. Mishunga Poli Dham Ki Jai. Mayapur Dham Ki Jai. Jai Ganath Puri Dham Ki Jai. Balade Subhadu Jai Ganath Juhu Ki Jai. श्रीपाद कृष्ण के सब प्रभु की जय थैंक यू प्रभु जी थैंक यू